the last learning objective of this module is components and the organization uh, of GIS. So there are five components of a GIS or geographic information system. First one is the data, data with spatial context. Um, so this data comes from surveys, sensors, um, historical maps, and historical records. All in all, this data is what is um, stored and processed and analyzed in a GIS system. The other component of GIS is its hardware. This is the infrastructure that provides us to store and manage and process the data. And so the hardware um, includes the data that is used to acquire, uh, the hardware that is used to acquire the data, for example, uh, GPS devices um, and field data, uh, data recorders. It also includes computers that are used to process, um, store and process the data. And it also includes uh, devices that are used to produce output from the data, such as plotters, 3D printers, um, and displays. The next component is the software. There's a wide range of software that is available to um, perform uh, GIS. Um, the most common that you will see among many federal agencies and state agencies is the ESRI or ESRI ArcMap uh, slash ArcGIS. Uh, but there is also a, a, a whole suite of GIS software available from um, Autodesk. Um, and not only that, there are many other applications even in the open source arena. Um, GRASS and Quantum GIS is an open source program free of cost. You can download it and use it pretty reliably. Um, the, other, the fourth component of GIS is the applications and methods. And these are the, the algorithms that work at, inside a GIS that helps us solve spatial problems. And for example, the route finder that you use in your uh, Google Maps is a method, a spatial method, which is part of a GIS. Similarly, if we are overla overlaying different uh, layers, that's a, a, a method. Um, used for spatial analysis. For example, in Google Maps, you can see an overlay of colors that show you the um, congestion of traffic uh, in different parts of the transportation network. The last but not least uh, component of GIS is people. Um, and, and that's actually um, an interesting concept that people are very important in the GIS. Um, and the word information itself um, should emphasize it why humans are important because GIS is needed and it, it, it um, plays an important role in converting data into information for human consumption. So humans are needed to help to achieve that, uh, achieve that goal. So this includes uh, data managers that are responsible for uh, taking care of the data and um, then analysts who process the data and uh, ask questions from the data and then users who actually take, the, take those answers from the data um, and then take the scene and take action. And these could be um, a, a manager on, uh, on, a, on, a, on, uh, on a stream network or a, at a dam deciding whether to open the gates to let the flood flow pass or not. Or it could be a policymaker um, in Washington, Washington DC deciding whether to increase certain subsidies for farmers in a certain region of the country. Um, so uh, these components constitute the GIS um, that we use on a day-to-day -day basis. Now, the GIS in organizations um, uh, helps us, us make decisions. And so it appears in many organizations. Um, it appears in urban management, uh, planning, transportation, emergency response, flood control are a few examples of such um, urban organizations where they appear. It also appears in state and federal levels, um, and a few examples are the Nevada uh, De Department of Transportation, uh, Nevada Department of, uh, or, uh, Nevada Division of uh, 
uh, Environmental Protection, Bureau of Land Management, U.S. Forest Service, and U.S. Fish and Wildlife uh, Service. All of these organizations and many other organizations in U.S. and around the world are using um, GIS. And um, I want to go through this cycle that um, happens within an organization um, in using GIS. So first of all, all organizations are dealing with the real world, and so and they're they're understanding the real world at the same time making decisions that change the real world. So when the real world exists, there is data, um, the geographic data that comes from the real world, and there are models that process it, um, and they 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 they, they alter the the data and. Um, these models um, help us then understand what's going on in the world. And once we understand the world, then we can start ask, asking questions. What can we do? So if the world is not um, the way we want it to be, then we say, how can we change it? So if our city is expanding too fast or our population is increasing too fast, so the real world demographic information says there are not enough houses. So that's the knowledge we learned from this path. Now we know that there are not enough houses. What can we do to overcome that problem? So then we design and sketch solutions. And based upon uh, those um, different scenarios, we have different solutions. We could have A, B, C um, options that we could choose from. But we have to choose from them in a smart way. And that's where we may have certain criteria. We, they could be a, 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 a spatial criteria versus non-spatial criteria. Non-spatial criteria could be, you know, amount of money, dollars, uh, dollar value on it. But spatial criteria could be proximity and closeness to the city. So in any case, based upon those evaluations um, and analysis, we can come up with some decisions, um, which is basically shortlisting of our options. Um, and then once we take action on those decisions, that eventually changes the world. So all of these organizations in one way or the other are going through this, this cycle. They, they interact with the real world and this is where GIS is helping them um, in making interactions that are more educated and then they're designed to have minimum impact um, while solving our geographical or uh, problems that are um, that we have to deal with so um, my last slide is about where is the future of GIS and of course there, there are many this is a prediction um, where things are where things might be going um, but uh, I think there's going to be a continuation of um, in development of the, the GIS database right now there's a lot of there's a lot of push on integrating the data and summarizing the data so and we are generating data at a very large scale what we need to do is um, get a better handle on it and it's going to keep increasing a lot of historical data is going to con be converted more remote sensing and UAV data is going to be integrated into our current understanding of spatial of the uh, sort of earth space uh, next we need better real-time utility so we have much push in the web, web GIS and mobile application, and we will see more uh, appearing um, on, on, on this um, uh, spectrum with much more utilities and new applications of spatial data coming into existence. Um, we need better integration of sensors and network uh, data, and that's where the network science is going to come into play. There's a lot of uh, a large uh, network of sensors all around the world and it's expanding more and more sensors are being built. UAVs are our mobile sensors that are going to be getting high resolution imagery of the surface. So all of this needs to be integrated and that's where the new push is going to be. Um, and of course um, at the core of the methods we have spatial models that help us predict future. So uh, there's, got a lot of, there's going to be a lot of integration with the existing um, that uh, G G the existing G GIS with other spatial models, improvement of, uh, for example, our hydrological modeling, improvement of our uh, geological modeling, um, that helps us convert 
uh, data into information so we can take some um, actions to 